Hey Valley Middle, welcome back to another math video. Tonight we're going to be writing one variable equations. Before we do that, let's start off with our trivia question. Just for fun, what is this symbol and how much was the original designer paid to create it? I'll give you the answer to that after instruction tonight. Officially our target is I can write one variable equations for a given situation. Let's do this time. Uh, tonight you're going to be given a word problem like this and instead of solving it, you're going to have to write a one variable equation that represents it. Now I'll teach you how to write it in the proper form. I'll show you a couple of different strategies that will make this rather difficult skill a little bit more manageable. All right. Uh, each winter, humpback whales migrate 1,500 miles to the Indian Ocean. However, one whale migrated 5,000 miles in one season. How many miles farther did the normal than normal did this whale travel? All right. Well, here's the, uh, our target. Write uh, one variable equation to represent the situation. So here's where I, I wrote this equation on. Here's the 1,500 miles, and this represents what the normal whales migrate. This one particular male whale migrated m more miles. We don't know how many more, but a whole bunch more. And altogether, it equals 5,000 miles. So, you know, here's the variable. This variable stands for the m stands for the number of miles further this whale migrated. That's all we have to do. Everybody's trying to solve the problem. We don't need to solve the problem. We just need to write the equation. Or if it's a multiple choice test, choose the correct equation. Let's look at some vocabulary. First of all, expressions and equations. These here are expressions. We've been working a lot with these. We've got 4x. We've got 36 divided by x. We've got 2 minus h. They all are some combination of symbols and letters or variables that represent something. These here, on the other hand, are equations. They have symbols, they have variables, but they also have an equal sign. And remember, that equal sign is like a teeter-totter. It balances out. Whatever's on one side has to be balanced out by what's on the other side. So be careful. You can see the word equa or for equal in equations. Also, you need to be careful of these things. These are prop this is a properly formatted equation. x plus 1 equals 2. You always want to have the x, the m, the v, whatever variable you choose with the operation. In other words, you want it with the plus, minus, divide, or multiply. You don't want it sitting out here all by itself. And you'll find out a little bit later in chapter 3 why we, we don't want them there. It's not because we can't solve the problem that way. We can solve the problem that way, but we can't balance the equation that way. So this is big old um, And then also be careful of these three things here x divided by 3, x divided by 3, and x divided by 3. What? Wait, let me say it again. x divided by 3, x divided by 3, x divided by 3. Say what? Yes, these three things are all the same. Just a different way of writing it. Yes, the fraction bar means division. That's all you need to know. It's the most important lesson I'll teach you all year long, so absorb it. Take a minute. Just bring it to you. Okay, good. Got it. That was a little weird, but, you know, whatever. Uh, all right. Uh, let's take a couple look at strategies. Taco Bell has 39 items on the menu. I've had 29 of them in one sitting. How many menu items do they have that I have not eaten? All right, well, strategy one, solve the dumb problem. All right, well, I would say 39 minus 29 equals 10, right? No big deal. It's not about solving the problem. However, if you solve the problem with addition, you write it with subtraction. If you solve it with a subtraction, you write an equation with addition. If you solve it with multiplication, you write a division equation. If you solve it with division, you won't write a multiplication equation. Let me put that all in a little bit more perspective here. 39 minus 29 is what I did. I subtracted, right? So I'm going to write the equation with division or with addition. I just use the opposite operation. So here's the 29 I started with. I'm going to eat I more items, and then I'll have 39. Okay, um, also, now, you can also label these things. Here's the number of items I've had, the items I need to try, and here are the total items. Labeling is probably the most important, important part of being successful in this target. Let's take a look at strategy number two. I call this one, eliminate dumb answers. All right, I can clean 84 ground level windows per hour with one helper. How long will it take me for me for me to clean 378 windows. Use let H stand for the number of hours. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so the first one, uh, I clean 84 hours. I clean 84 windows per hour. I add that to the number of hours, and I've got 380. That makes no sense whatsoever, no sense at all. All right, so here, let's do this. I clean uh, 84 hours per win, or uh, I clean 84 windows per hour. Um, I multiply that by the total number of windows cleaned, and I have the number of hours? 
What? No. If you think that's right, you probably drank your chemistry set. Uh, let's see. Number of H. So, so. The number of hours, I'm going to subtract the total number of windows cleaned, and I'm going to have 84 windows? Uh, I don't think so, Tim. Uh, let's see. 84 windows cleaned per hour times the number of hours equals the total windows clean. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> yeah, simply by reading through, you can eliminate three. All right, I settled down. Let's take a look at this next problem here. Um, my three kids went trick-or-treating last Halloween. Tara got 200 pieces of candy. Connor got 300 pieces. If they got 900 pieces altogether, how many pieces did Casey get? Let's see. Represent the number of pieces of candy Casey stole. I mean, Casey got. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. Well, I think what's important on both of the strategies, one and two, is to make sure I'm labeling some stuff. So this time I'm just going to try to label some stuff on my own. So I know that Tara got a couple hundred pieces of candy. And let me see if I can get this to pop in. There it is. Slide it down. Tara got 200 pieces of candy. Connor got 300. Casey got some C candies. And all together, they got this many. They got 900. So I've gone through and I've labeled it. And I was able to get it solved that way. Um, good. Now, um, if, if that was too difficult, you could always just take and work backwards and go, well, to solve this thing, I'd go 900 minus 300 minus 200. I subtracted twice, so when you have a subtraction type of equation, if you solve with subtraction, you write with addition. Here's my addition right here. Okay? I could have also combined these and said, well, 500 plus C. I could have combined Tara and Connor. But I thought it was just easy to write it out, write out what I got, and label it. All right, let's have you try two, to pause, uh, two or three pause problems. Go ahead and try this first one here. All right, let's see how you did. Mrs. Crothers drives 200 miles to work each week and, and back. She works five days a week. How many miles does she drive each day? Well, uh, five days times the number of miles equals 200. Yes, you could have written this as 5 times m, but I think more than likely on uh, math tests, you're going to see 5m. When it's right next to the variable like that, that means multiply. Um, five days per week. M miles per day, total of this many miles. Weren't sure? You could have gone back to the old solve it. Take 200, divide by the five days she works. Well, kind of works. I mean, work is a relative term. Uh, 200 divided by 5 would equal 40. So you solve it with division, write it with multiplication. Uh, take a look at this one here. Ricky Tiki Tak has 889 baseball cards. He puts them into a binder with the same number of cards on each page. He fills 21 pages. How many cards are displayed on each page? Write an equation that represents this problem. Go ahead and pause it for a minute and see if you can solve that one by yourself. See how you did. Um, number of pages in the binder was 21. Okay. There was, we don't know how many cards just per page, but he had 21 pages times this many cards on each page were for 189 total. Good, that worked out. Yes, you probably would have seen it written as 21C. I'm trying to get you used to seeing that both ways. All right, I think I got one more pause problem. Uh, the Sidewinders lost 42 games last season in the Grapefruit League. They played a total of 100 games. How many games did they win? All right, how do you want to solve this? You want to solve the dumb problem and write it backwards? Or, you know, use the opposite operation? Yeah, I guess that's really your only chance since, or, you know, there's no, no choices here. Give it a shot. Well, I'd have done 100 minus 42, so that means I'm going to write it with addition. So I flipped it around here to throw you off a little bit, see if I could. So here's the total games, and that's equal to the 42 losses plus some wins. Because remember, I did 100 minus 42. I did a subtraction to solve, so I wrote with addition. Here's the losses. W has to be the wins. And that's it. All right, here are your two ticket to the show problems. I started the year with 100 pencils. Mrs. Carlton gave me some more. Now I have 132. How many did Mrs. Carlton give me? All right, I'm just going to make that a small S. And Mr. Persons had 23 coins in a jar. He gave a handful of his a handful to his kids to play with. Now there are only 16 coins. How many coins did he give his kids? Let's pick the variables and stuff for that. All right, here's the trivia question. What symbol is this? Well, of course, that's the Nike swoosh. Probably the most recognizable franchise mark in history. Yes, the creator was only paid $35. Kind of a cool story. Uh, Nike paid Carolyn Davidson, a young graphic designer, 
student. $35 for the famous swoosh symbol. The founder of Nike, Phil Knight, was teaching accounting at Portland State University when he met Davidson, hired her to do some freelance design for his company, Blue Ribbon Sports, and everybody likes it. I can't do that smile, but anyway, it's kind of fun. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.